This podcast is about introducing our fans to the animals, plants, and other products that we work with at Josh's Frogs. It's an opportunity to paint a picture of our hobby that is refreshing. We want you guys to be successful with the animals that you're keeping, and we want our hobby to grow ethically and sustainably into the future. Welcome to the Josh's Frogs podcast. Today, I got Jason. We're going to talk about some more tarantulas. But before we do that, I just want to let you know that the Josh's Frogs podcast is brought to you by Josh's Frogs. We're your one-stop shop for all your reptile, amphibian, and pet bug needs. So we carry only captive bred animals. Um, and then we carry all the supplies you need to take care of them, from heating, lighting, and caging, uh, all the way to all the feeder insects that they uh, need to devour, and all the live plants that uh, turn that uh, terrarium into a naturalistic uh, terrarium. So check us out. Um, we got customer service agents ready to answer any uh, questions you might have, tons of blogs and articles, and how-to guides, and then we can do a bunch of videos as well, too, because we want you to be um, equipped with the right education to take care of those animals uh, that you love. Um, so we want to be able to do that first. So check us out, joshesfrogs.com. And without further ado, welcome, Jason. Thanks for coming on. Uh, tell us a little bit about your um, experience with uh, tarantulas. I know you've shared on some of the other uh, podcasts, but uh, tell us how you got into tarantulas and then how you got to hear into Josh's Frogs. Well, I'll give you a fun TLDR. Um, some 24 years ago, I was so arachnophobic, I didn't even want to change the water dishes of the um, rose hair tarantulas of Proust pets. <laughs> and then through exposure, that fear turns into fascination. Fast forward through a life that I spent uh, actually really uh, pouring and investing into this hobby that I've had so much fun with. I mm. uh, made it so that we had the biggest uh, captive collection of tarantulas for sale at Proust Pets. And I'm working on building the largest captive breeding uh, tarantula project in the nation here at Josh's Frogs. That's awesome. That's awesome. And tell me a little bit about what that means, like, um, as far as, like, what do you do here at Josh's Frogs? Like, explain it like our uncles and aunts that have no idea what taking care of uh, spiders and tarantulas means. Like, walk us through. Like, what does a, a week look like uh, for you? I love it. The great thing about tarantulas is they are so low maintenance. Uh, the only thing with lower maintenance is probably going to be a pet rock. <laughs> uh, with my adults, uh, once a week, I go through and feed them. Uh, three times a week, uh, I go through and spray their environment because that's their favorite way to get water. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about it. Uh, when they molt, I take their molts out and they don't eat for a week. Um, but that allows me to be responsible for, you know, up to more than 3,000 spiders. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. Now, one of the pe things that uh, people are most afraid of when they hear about tarantulas is, man, that's going to really hurt me. Can you really explain some of their defense mechanism and, and how dangerous is a, is a tarantula? Yeah, it's good to know what the actual threat level is on the tarantula. Um, there's actually never been a human death associated with tarantulas, wow. uh, not even from an allergic reaction. Wow. Uh, their venom is very primitive and not particularly strong and uh, happens to exist in a chemical form that doesn't seem to provoke an allergic reaction like uh, true spiders, bees, wasps, and snakes can. Mm. Uh, many of the New World tarantulas uh, employ a secondary defense, and I'd say that's analogous to a cop having both a stun gun and a uh, <laughs> uh, service revolver. Uh, the urticating hairs, uh, most of them keep it there on their abdomen, and most of them throw it using uh, their back legs hooking and casting, yep. and it, it occurs is a little puff of you can see a little dust and uh, it's a horrifying cross mm. between poison ivy and uh, insulation and uh, it's just it's just for a while uh, it does spread everywhere you touch uh, you spread it but it usually goes after a way a short while if we were to get in your eyes that could be pretty serious yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's actually the most harm a transfer can do for do to you Awesome, awesome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about size when it comes to tarantulas. So before we start talking about animals, can you talk a little bit about size, like what people should expect when they, they think of tarantulas, like how how small are tarantulas, how large are tarantulas? Like give us give us a rundown, just kind of an overview of like the size range that some of these tarantulas can be. Absolutely. Well, first I'm going to confess that my idea of large and most other people's idea of large spiders are a little bit different. <laughs> so we're going to start there. Uh, now when most people think Rancho, though they do think giant spider and yeah when it comes to giant spider we got you covered there uh the largest spider ever measured was a goliath bird eater therifosa blondi and she had a diagonal leg span from one her number one leg spread all the way to her number four 
of 11 and three quarters inch. Wow. Now, unfortunately, that's not a great measurement of size. Yeah. Um, because uh, there are other spiders that have actually achieved that leg span or more that aren't bigger. Mm. Uh, you're a pretty tall guy, Josh. You're yep. like what, six one, six two? Six one. Six one. I'm actually only six foot, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm about three hundo pounds, bro. I'm a much <laughs> larger person than you are. Uh, you may be the bigger guy. I'm the bigger person. Yeah, whatever. Um, so the thing is, they're so bulky. Uh, yeah. uh, that spider's abdomen was probably the size of an avocado. Wow. So um, that's at the large end. Yeah. Now, most tarantulas are kept in the hobby. Uh, the most common ones have actually been in the neighborhood of five inches, give or take. Gotcha. And that's going to be like your red knees, um, um, your balfries, um, Armenia, all these uh, spiders commonly, what most people think of as a, a good sized tarantula is about, you know, six inch leg span. Yep. Yep. Uh, now, actually, there's different groups of tarantulas, and some of them uh, get quite large, mm -hmm. uh, like the three big theraphosas, the Goliath breeder, the Burgundy Goliath, uh, and the Goliath Pinkfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we'll start out on the tiny ant. Nice. Uh, there are dwarf uh, species. Over here, we have. This is Cirrocosmus elegans. She is not only full size and mature, but she's been a mom, two different egg sacs. Oh my gosh. I love the striping. Yes, uh, the common name's uh, variable, and I forget often, but I think it's like the Colombian dwarf tiger beauty. Mm. Uh, and that uh, refers to those beautiful stripes on her side. And you'll see she's got that metallic heart on her butt mm -hmm. and uh, that's a lot of people find that extremely cute yep uh, the only thing i think is even cuter now is actually where they that is where they keep their heart uh, their heart uh, goes along the length of their abdomen really wow now now this guy is pretty small like when does it become a tarantula when is it a spider like it, this seems like this seems like a little bit larger than a lot of the spiders I would see around my house, but like pretty close to the size of some of the very large spiders I might find around my house. It's a pretty uh, common mistake to assume that the size is what relates them uh, and differentiates them, but it's not. It's relationship. Really? Uh, the tarantulas are all uh, in the order Megalomorphidae. Okay. And uh, there are a few others in there, like some of the more primitive trapdoor spiders. Uh, but then you get down into Theraphosidae uh, suborder, and that's all your true tarantulas. Huh. Uh, and whether they're tiny, whether they're big, they all share uh, certain characteristics. Like all tarantulas have the same eye arrangement. Mm -hmm. Different spiders, you can, I can tell, the way I have to tell the difference between a wolf spider and a fishing spider is wolf spiders, the central eyes are the big ones, and in fishing spiders, the radial eyes are the big ones. Huh. But tarantulas, they all have two big uh, median eyes, and each of the median eyes are surrounded by three small orbitals. And huh. I think it's cute. I actually just recently took a picture that I hope we put on our website that uh, if you catch the light right, those little uh, orbital eyes look like uh, glowing eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome now uh her boyfriend similar size or a tiny fraction of her like you feel bad for the guy <laughs> uh he's like the size of her front end are you serious yeah, and he has to get under her and lift her up like um i'm gonna find some way to get you some pictures of me <laughs> breeding them and you feel bad for the boy <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome now how old is she uh she's i think uh Four and a half, maybe five years old. Oh, my gosh. And how much longer do you think she'll uh, live? Probably another four. Really? Okay. Uh, we'll keep her in the breeding program, uh, and if she lays another egg sac, uh, then she gets retired. Wow. Uh, we're not running, running a tarantula mill her. No? <laughs> <laughs> so she has to retire. She does another egg sac. And if she never does another egg sac, she still gets to live pampered her whole life. Oh, my gosh. Now, egg sac, how many, how many babies is she going to produce? When she's 60 to 120, and they are absolute spirits. Uh, at the eggs with legs stage, they're about half the size of the period you write at the end of a sentence. Are you serious? Uh, and then once they're even moving around, uh, they're smaller than our uh, smaller fruit flies. Wow. Now, something that small, what, what, are, we, what are we feeding it? Uh, well, they are actually very strong for their size. So we can give them the, the melanogaster fruit flies. But my favorite when they're little is I'll uh, kill uh, small to medium-sized crickets. Okay. Uh, rip their heads off to make sure they don't come back because crickets can survive ridiculous things. Yeah. Uh, and leave them in there and they'll feed off that. Really interesting. 
That is so cool. They're a challenge when they're teeny tiny. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, cannibalism when they're really tiny like that? Will they eat each other? All up and down the age scale. Really? Yeah. Uh, I've had people say they won't uh, eat each other uh, in the first few instars while they're still uh, before they are spider shaped. <laughs> and that's not true. I actually got to see a, um, uh, not sonogram. What do you use when you use sound to look inside? Like when you're checking the sex of a baby? Ultrasound. Ultrasound. An ultrasound of an egg sac. And it was a Pocletheria uh, species, and one of them in the egg sac was eating the other one. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. Survival <laughs> of the fittest. That is a really, really pretty guy. And this size, what type of enclosure are you uh, keeping them in? Oh, nuts. I meant to bring her enclosure because I want to differentiate from the big one. Yeah. Uh, she lives in a Betty Crocker Tupperware uh, nice. that you would put uh, like some casserole to take to work. It's uh, about, uh, say, about five inches by gotcha. five inches, and it's spacious. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, where does she spend most of her time? Is she on the ground? Is she? The term we use is pet hole. Uh, <laughs> I see her front end when I feed her. <laughs> Uh, that's the first time i've seen that old spider in years that's so pretty that is so pretty that's really cool so when we're looking at really tinies uh here's one that's a bit more rare um you'd be really proud of owning this one josh if you knew what i knew that Syracosmus leetsius that's one of my favorite Syracosmus. uh really pretty spider they got that beautiful u with tiger stripes coming off their abdomen and very very rare uh ours are probably the only ones that you're ever going to see Wow, this is not that they don't exist out there. Just the average person doesn't see many. You can you can see a little bit of uh, similarities between this guy and the the last one, um, but like just much more coloring on its back. I love it. Definite close cousins. Yeah. So there's part of the same genera. So it'd be like having the same nest name uh, relate closely related. That's so pretty. That's so pretty. Similar size habitat. Similar. Actually, it's identical to hers. Cool. And lives right next to her. They couldn't live together, though, because you'd only have one fat one. <laughs> Same size uh, egg sacs. 60 yes, to 60 to 120, absolutely tiny. Um, and then you just hold your breath till they're big enough to eat uh, Heidi Eye, and then we sell them. That's cool. Really cool desk pet to keep in a small enclosure right there on your desk. Oh, absolutely, because you could do this really pretty uh, subterranean going to terranean with uh, plants yeah. emerging. And there's clever ways of uh, making it so you can see your uh, pet hole. Yeah. Um, a young lady that taught me a lot about spiders uh, showed me how you find where their hole is underground and you tape a piece of uh, construction paper above mm. and they'll keep building their ground until they hit that glass because they love that hard yeah. surface. Uh, but as long as you keep that uh, construction paper blocking it, it's dark and hidden. She likes yeah. it. So then you lift it up and then you can see directly inside. Oh, that's inside. cool. That's cool. So yeah, Rochelle taught me a lot. That's cool. That's a really pretty spider. Tarantula, I guess I should say. Uh, tarantula <laughs> is a type of spider. <laughs> so I can say spider when it comes to tarantulas. Uh -huh. there, are, there are true spiders, uh, and that's a special group, and that's where, like, wolf spiders, orb weavers, and what you're used to a spider. Huh. Uh, but that term true spider made some people think that if you're not in the true spider group, then you're, you're not, not a spider, spider, and that's not true. <laughs> okay, so we st we're still looking at, bay, uh, at uh, dwarfs. Now let's look at some that look a little bit different. Now, unfortunately, she's just before molt, so she's not in her full glory. Oh, and her full glory, that spider looks like they're 24 carat. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely gold. That is the gold form of the Trinidad olive. Um, she's full grown. She's ready to have babies once I get a boy for her. Um, this species actually is supposed to be one of the ones that's easiest to be kept communal. But from now on, when I talk about communal, I'm always going to caveat with it's always dangerous and yeah. it can always fail. <laughs> oh, very, very pretty. I, I can't imagine it getting any more cold than that. That's amazing. It, oh, my God. It uh, just spikely, sparkly. Looks like someone literally painted it in gold. Flames. Really? Now, being bright like that, is that a defense mechanism to like, hey, don't step on me. I can throw some hairs at you type defense. Or does it actually blend into its surroundings? Is it more? of a camouflage it's a blending thing because uh it's not bright enough to be a post-somatic uh there's some that uh, tarantulas that have bright reds um 
to, I mean, I guess in ca- that case, it'd be Bartesian. Yeah. Uh, they're fakers. Um, but nope, uh, just ha- they, uh, they live in a world of white, so I don't understand how either the the olive or the gold form. When I say all- world of white, that's because they make an um, absolute subway system of tunnels with their webbing. Oh, really? Yes. On the ground? Underground. Underground. I gotcha. And that's really cool. It's not uh, It's not meant to catch prey, though, right? It's- no. Her, their, uh, tarantulas do not use webbing to catch prey, uh, but they will use webbing to make early warning systems, like a bunch of tripwires. Oh, really? Uh, and uh, a lot of times after uh, a tarantula eats, uh, they'll do something that uh, hobbyists refer to as the happy dance. And you'll see them dancing back and forth and using their big uh, spinnerets to tap the ground all over the place. So what they're doing is putting little silt fibers. So if anything's walking by, it touches one that's connected to all the others. She feels the vibrations. It's her earning warning system while she, warning system while she's eating. Really, that is so interesting, huh? That is so cool. Again, uh, hole dig, digs a hole. Spends most of their time underground. Well, um, they do so much tunneling that uh, I would just simply modify it and say pet tunnel. Really. Interesting. Yeah, I had to take apart her whole environment to get her. <laughs> oh. The advantage was hers. 100% hers. <laughs> so size uh, enclosures for this guy, since they do a lot of tunneling. She lives in an enclosure that's the size of a um, uh, shoebox. Oh, really? That's cool. That's really cool. Very pretty. Very pretty. So over here we have... One of our most popular tarantulas that we sell. That is a pumpkin patch. We sell them at a quarter of an inch. And we have to raise them up up a bit to get there. Uh, So they are teeny tinies. Uh, These guys turn their whole home into a burrow. So they lay down a lot of silk. And you can see they create dips and tunnels. Uh, But, uh, like, you open it up and they're visible because they've turned the whole enclosure into the burrow. Really? Huh. And how many babies are they? These guys producing like is it sixty similar? to one hundred and twenty is uh, for many species uh, a the normal norm. number. Wow. Uh, later we'll be dealing with uh, among one of the giants. Uh, she can do fifteen hundred to three thousand. Holy moly! Two of the giants can do that. Holy moly! Now, how long is she? Two inches, maybe. Maybe two um, inches. Two two and a half ish. Okay. She's got her legs all scrunched up. Pretty. They are very pretty. Very similar, like coloring, like it's that that orangish, uh, tannish color. Like this is way more orange than the the last guy, but very pretty. You'll see a lot of those uh, colors repeated again and again. And I think that's what helps them blend in. Yeah, that's very pretty. Okay, we got one last dwarf. This is Cochiana Brunapaz. It's a dwarf pink leg, I think. Pretty. Yeah, the last time uh, I we produced those, um, I had an egg sack, and I thought I had plenty of time until I got back to be able to pull it, <laughs> and I had two newer employees taking over, yeah, holding down the shop while I was gone, and uh, I forgot that smaller tarantulas have faster development periods. Oh no! And they they not only hatched in their egg sack, they left the egg sack while I was on vacation and my employees had to use eyeshadow brushes to try to capture like 16th of an inch spiders. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> they actually did a remarkable job. Now, where are these guys from? I think they're from Trinidad, but I could be oh, wrong. Oh, cool. My biology is much better than my geography. In fact, most of my geography is, comes attached to, uh, I know what tarantulas are from Brazil because they're called Brazilian giant white. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> giant blonde. <laughs> Uh, pretty again similar colors again yes and she's got the the heart on her butt right now it's uh, more irregular shaped uh, which is not uncommon as they get further away from a molt and closer to the next molt Uh, once she gets out of her next molt uh, it'll be more crisp like a heart I see the breaking up of the heart makes it look like more like a skull on her uh, butt looks kind of cool that's absolutely metal Josh (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. So now that we've seen the littles, let's see the bigs. Okay. <laughs> this is Pinkie Pie. She's doing a threat pose towards you. She's lifting up her front to show you her fangs to let you know oh, what the, where the business end is if you continue to offend her. Wow. Uh, she's a Pinkie Pie. I named her after My Little Pony because I thought it was funny because she's an absolute psychopath. <laughs> different breeds of tarantula, species of tarantulas seem to have different consistent personalities, just like different breeds of dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. What if a chihuahua was big enough to hurt you? <laughs> Uh, she just seems to be calming down. Don't put your thumb directly underneath where her mouth is. There you go. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure it could stop her. <laughs> she seems to be mellowing out. She's, She's calming not. down. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> She's not doing the equivalent of holding her fist cocked behind her back. Wow. Such a pretty animal. That is such a gorgeous animal. It's not nearly as popular as it should be with the greens and the golds and the reds. Uh, that's I really have a place in my heart for Brazilian blondes. Not all the things I love love me back. Now this full size, yeah, she might get a little bit bigger. She's adult, but uh, she might grow a little bit yet. Uh, hopefully, I've got a boy for her on the way right as we speak. Wow. Uh, ironically, I did have a boy for her before three years ago, and she wasn't quite mature, I guess, because she showed absolutely no interest, no interest. in that boy. <laughs> and every year after that, she's laid a phantom egg sack. Are you serious? Wow. So she hasn't laid one this year. If she does, then she's probably ruined for breeding this year. Wow. But she hasn't done one yet, and I've got the boy on the way. So if he gets here tomorrow, I will be so happy. That's so cool. Now, how old is she? Um, she's probably about six years old. Okay. I haven't had her whole time. And she was just at the cusp of maturity when I got her. Wow. Such a pretty animal. Now, she'll have larger egg sacs than the That's the one of the giants. Uh, the ones that can have uh, in excess of a 1,000 could be all the way up to three. Wow, that's a lot of babies. Yeah. A I lot know. of babies. Now, size and closure for her? Um, she lives in a uh, uh, 12 by 12, but uh, I'm about to move her up into an 18 by 18. Wow. Uh, spends most of her time... In a hole. In a hole. Yep. Or right at the mouth of the hole. Yeah. Uh, something this large, what are you feeding? Uh, she gets crickets. Um, if uh, we weren't uh, in a growth stage in our roach uh, pro yeah. program, because we just can't keep up with yeah. the man, Josh. Um, I would probably take roaches, but uh, we have plenty of crickets, and we need to make more roaches. That's so pretty. Yes, she? Now... Since she's a little bit uh, grouchy, like how 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 are you moving her into this type of uh, enclosure? Like how do you how do you move her around? Like how do, how are you being very careful? carefully and very politely? Yeah, I uh, I took her uh, drawer out. She uh, lives in a heated rack. Yeah, uh, I took her drawer out uh, with a lid on it to make sure she doesn't run out. Because if yeah. she jumps out and falls any decent uh, length and cracks her abdomen, she's mm. done. She doesn't have the ability to stop that from bleeding. So uh, to be careful, I put my lid on the containers. I take it out and I take it over to my workspace. I put that inside of another enclosure. So if she gets out, I've got another barrier before she's leaving. Yeah. Uh, and then I used uh, that enclosure uh, that she's in now. I took out the uh, hide log. Yeah. I put it on the side in front of her and I tapped her in the butt with a lid and nobody likes being tapped in the butt <laughs> by strangers. So she ran in there and I closed it and I said, thank you for not being evil. Oh. <laughs> I really did say thank you for not being evil. That is really, <laughs> really pretty. Really pretty. So it needs a little bit larger of an enclosure than some of the dwarf yes. ones that we were the, Not as big as you might think. The thing about tarantulas is they are the ultimate homebodies. Yeah. Uh, the Goliath bird eater, she lives in an 18 by 18, and she needs no more. No. Uh, when I worked at Proust Pets, I made a show-off tank for a Goliath bird eater that was 36 inches by 18 inches. And mm. she used... About 12 by 12. <laughs> of the enclosure, that's and so And she cool. was like 11. Uh-huh. So they just don't use a lot. They're the ultimate potato. <laughs> All right. So this is the first species of tarantula that I ever owned. 
A friend of mine came back from uh, Daytona uh, Animal Show back when they had that uh, with a Brazilian giant whitening. It is one of my most recommended first spiders. Uh, they grow relatively fast. They get to a nice size. Uh, they can be aggressive if uh, they feel frightened, but if they're raised in a non-fearful environment, interact in ways that don't frighten her, they can actually be very, very tolerant. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Pretty commonly kept, or is it? They're one of the most popular tarantulas out there, and for good reason. That's so pretty. Now, when they're babies, they all tarantulas as babies tend to hide out a lot because they're lower down on the food chain. Right. Uh, as she got bigger, she has risen in the food chain and gotten much more confidence. So uh, this spider is one that you would see out, what I call out and about. Really? Uh, that you're going to see um, in the enclosure moving around a little bit where you can see her. Cool. And that's that's really cool when you're, you're talking about like a first time tarantula. Like you want something that's out and about. So you're not like you get fearful, like, hey, is it doing OK? I can't really tell. It's nice when the animals are out and about and you can. That's amazing. Put your you mind point that out. A lot of people don't look uh, don't foresee that uh, they think, uh, oh, if I don't see it, it's just going to be boring. Yeah. No, I love the people that come to us for tarantulas. Uh, they don't see it. They get worried about it. Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do I know he's OK? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Bigger bodied, I, I feel like, than some of the... Yeah, uh, you'll notice the giants, uh, they're terrestrials, and terrestrials are built heavy, especially the big ones, because yeah. what they have is strength, and that's what mm -hmm. they use to, to hunt with. Uh, surprise and strength. Uh, they grab their prey with those uh, front two pairs, bring it to their fangs, and just perforate it <laughs> until it stops moving. That's such a pretty animal. Yeah. And I love the hair. I love the hair. It's so funny. Until it gets on me, but then <laughs> that is that is the story of it. All right, so this next spider is a, a, a lesson in false advertising. <laughs> this is the salmon pink bird eater, and as you will notice, there is no salmon, <laughs> there is no pink, and spoiler, it eats no birds, <laughs> not even in the wild. <laughs> Um, when uh, European naturalists got to the New World and just started discovering these big megalodon spiders, uh, they're like, wow, look at the size of these things. they got to eat birds, especially because some of the ones they found first were the pink toes, are spiders that get this big. Yeah. And their scientific name means bird eating. Wow. Uh, so maybe that was a bit exaggerated. Uh, birds actually are very dangerous prey for a tarantula. Oh, I bet. Uh, their uh, part of their movement is hydraulic. Mm. And if anything were to puncture it and it lose blood pressure... It can't move. Wow. So, but it is a big spider. It is a contender for the biggest. Uh, that's Judge Judy with a booty. Uh, a friend of mine <laughs> gave it to me as Judy, and I gave her a profession and a title. Um, and uh, she can get to where her leg span is the legs, uh, the span of that uh, cup. That dish. Oh my gosh, that's uh, crazy. They can go like nine, ten inches. Wow. Currently, she's about eight. Very pretty, very dark. I can see some uh, reddish orange on some of the hairs. Very pretty. Now, she's actually a mascot. Uh, she's a store pet here. I refuse to breed her because she has like 1,500 to 3,500 babies and enough other people breed them that we will buy theirs and sell, resell them. Wow. Help them move them. That's a lot of babies all yeah. at once. When a, when a panicked uh, a salmon pink bird eater owner has uh, an egg sack hatch, it's uh, usually when they're selling them, it's buy one, get 10 free. <laughs> it's a lot of mouths. What mouse you're going to do with 10 bird eaters, I don't know. But, <laughs> so, yeah, we're not going to we're not gonna bring more bird, more salmon pink bird eaters in the world. Uh, there's plenty. We'll help other people sell theirs. How long from baby to full size? Uh, that spider's probably about four years old. Gotcha. Wow, Actually, that's pretty fast. This spider is older than that spider. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, and about uh, one thousandth the size. Of Not this even guy. a snack. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. Very beautiful. I tell me about like larger tarantulas versus smaller tarantulas. Why would somebody go one way or the other? Like, is it personal preference? Is it Ease of care. Why would you go dwarf versus something that's a giant? Like, what? Actually, oftentimes it's an evolution. 
uh, when people come to tarantulas, uh, it's the fact that they're these big, fearsome creatures yep. that often is the first draw, the fact yep. that they're slightly afraid of them. Um, and the bigger they are, the more impressive they are. So yep. people start out being really impressed by size. And um, there are some great big spiders out there. We sell all sorts of big spiders. Yep. Uh, but to a beginner, I'd actually say if you're thinking about getting a Goliath breeder, which is the last one we're going to look at, um, that one, uh, it's, uh, it is the largest species ever recorded, and people mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Uh, and that's why we got you covered. We got them for yep. you. But they're harder to take care of. Yeah. Uh, however, the salmon pink bird eater, especially if you buy them when they're small, because they come in such big batches, you can get them very affordably. Yeah. They grow very quickly. They have a dry environment, so they're easier to take care of. Um, all around, uh, very similar spider uh, for a lot less uh, hassle and bucks. That's cool. That's cool. I uh, I hope that as we're doing these, people are becoming more aware of just like how cool and unique they are. Like I think we get this idea in our mind: this is a tarantula. That's it. That's all that it is. And to really see the breadth of, of differences, like, is really kind of cool. It makes us again. Appreciate that's them so more. interesting that you say that, Josh, because you just named the next step of the evolution. Because <laughs> first they're drawn to big and impressive and yeah. fierce, and then they're. Uh, dismayed by the uh, amazed by the diversity yeah and they're like oh wow they got these tiny little ones with hearts on their butts and <laughs> wow this guy's golden and i can have more than one and yeah um that's that's what brings them. they they come for the uh giants and they stay for the dwarves that's really cool that's really cool thank you jason for dropping some wisdom on us and, and uh helping us to appreciate these animals in, in unique ways i want to do a lightning round with you you've done some of these before so uh you feel free to change up your answer feel free to pass if you can't think of it so all right money and space are no option what's your dream pet i'm still down with a parenti yeah i want a lizard puppy please <laughs> all right your favorite animal or plant right now in the whole entire animal and plant kingdom what's the the coolest living thing on this planet First, I'm going to say I'm very sturdy Verwin about it. Uh, Ben's on what's in front of me. I fall in love with all of them. But right now, it's that uh, Brazilian giant blonde because I really, really want to see her to the babies that she's wanted all these years. Cool, cool. All right. You have a free hour of free time. No one's bothering you. The the wife, the kid, they're, they're away or something like that. What are you doing with that free time? What What's the one hour all to yourself Jason's doing? What are you doing? I'm about 50-50 because I'm in full growth mode in both. Uh, one is working on my yard. Uh -huh. uh, two is working uh, on uh, the arachnid division and oh, cool. building it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, last question. You got everybody's ear. You can give them one piece of advice. What's one thing you'll tell people uh, to either remember or to remind them or to um, encourage them or to educate them? What's one piece of advice you would give? Um, I'll add to my usual uh, piece of advice that I love to say is whenever possible, be generous and be kind. But uh, another one that I'm adding to it I love is stay curious. Mm. I like that. I like that. Thanks a lot, Jason. Um, Jason's a staple in a lot of our videos, uh, done some writing for us, um, oh, just a wealth of knowledge. So check out some of his stuff across uh, many of our channels. So thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy this content and want to stay up to date, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us across social media. We always want to bring you the best content, so let us know if you, what you think in the comments. And for all your reptile and amphibian needs, be sure to check us out at joshesfrogs.com. We have an amazing selection. Until next time, stay curious, stay froggy, and keep exploring.